man fought to the death for the law of his God. He did not fear the words of the godless, for he was built on solid rock. On behalf of Arch Abbot Kurt, who I understand has gone through his surgery and is recovering very nicely and will probably be at home this afternoon, I welcome all who have joined us today for this celebration of the Mass of St. Mindred here in the Arch Abbey Church. In a particular way, I welcome, of course, all of our alumni, but in a very particular way, I would also like to welcome uh, Bishop Gettelfinger, the Emeritus uh, Bishop of Evansville, and Bishop Siegel, the present Bishop of Evansville, and our presiding celebrant today, Bishop Eric Polmeyer, the Bishop of St. Augustine in Florida. So, welcome to all. As we prepare for this celebration then, we take a moment to make our hearts ready, acknowledging the role of our patron, St. Meinrad, seeking his intercession we pray for our hearts open to the mercy of God as we acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord's pardon and peace. on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. All-powerful, eternal God, 
Your wonders shine forth in the merits of your blessed martyr, Meinrad. We beg you that as you crowned him with the glory of suffering for your name, so now we might be aided by his prayers in obtaining your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, go forth from the land of your kinsfolk and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. All the communities of the earth shall find blessing in you. Abram went as the Lord directed him. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Whoever does not love remains in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that anyone who is a murderer does not have eternal life in him. The way we came to know love was that he laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If someone who has worldly means sees a brother in need and refuses him compassion, how can the love of God remain in him? Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. The word of the Lord.
According to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these things I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for men, it is impossible but not for God. All things are possible for God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In a very fundamental way, I am grateful for St. Meinrad, grateful for the opportunity to express my gratitude by celebrating Mass in this place of such rich history. My fundamental gratitude comes because in 1878, a band of monks from this place journeyed to a small hilltop in Arkansas. And they founded in that place another monastery that would eventually come to be known as Subiaco Abbey. And they gathered the faithful around that place, a place that was rural in nature with a little bit of a rolling hill, very much like this place. German Catholics, who had made their way to this country and were beginning to live their faith. Well, it was in that place that my family would eventually make their way. And so I ended up growing up in the shadow of Subiaco Monastery. 
My grandfather helped build the monastery back in the days when the local faithful would literally put brick on brick to build what would become a centerpiece of their life of faith. A community that would then grow and spread through Arkansas and Oklahoma and Texas with priests and sisters shaped in the life of Benedict, the rooted in their German heritage, and passing on the faith to the generations that I would eventually come to benefit from. And so I recognize that that laid a foundation, that that shaped my life growing up in an environment that I simply took for granted. But an environment that placed certain values in me, certain expectations about responding to the gospel, that I would only later, with the benefit of formation, begin to truly understand. And so I have this rootedness in the life of the Benedictines that I am grateful brings me here to celebrate with you today. But I'm also grateful in a more direct way for this place. And as I reflected on this celebration and looked at the readings that are part of this votive mass for St. Meinrad, I found myself identifying in this direct way with the rich young man of the Gospels. With every way except the rich part. (laughs) Growing up in rural Arkansas, that rich part was not what I had to let go of. But when I was sent to St. Meinrad College to begin direct formation to priesthood, what this place offered me was the same confrontation that we see between Jesus and this young man. The confrontation that said, yes, you have been raised in great values. You should appreciate that you follow the commandments and that you live that light of faith. But now, with the work of formation, you come here to encounter the Lord's call at a deeper level. And what the Lord always has to say to us is, what is good in you should be praised, but there is more for you. The Lord says, I have more, so that you can discover a greater richness in your life. For the rich young man, the richness that he needed to discover was found in laying down his material possessions. It tells us, at least in this encounter, that he was unable to do so. The richness that the Lord asked of me when I began my formation here was to say, lay down your presumptions. Lay down those things about the life of faith that you think are absolute because you should recognize that in the richness of the gospel, there is a breadth that you have not experienced. And so in those years of a formation, what happened in many ways in the direct work of the study of philosophy primarily, in the indirect way of conversations with fellow seminarians, with faculty members, formation members, Many things that I thought I knew began to be challenged. And it was in listening for the voice of Jesus in the face of that challenge that my life began to be shaped and molded in such a way that I was now on the journey that would lead to priesthood. A journey that would allow the riches of Christ to take root in me more fully. And so as I arrived here as a young man in my 20s, I had to face the same Jesus who said to the rich young man, give everything and follow me. And as I found myself wrestling like the rich young man to say, how can this be? I found the support that came from being taught a life of prayer from an intellectual pursuit that would say, let's see what is true. From beginning to look at the truth of the scriptures, of the life of faith, of all of the things that would allow my prior presumptions not to be so much broken down as to be expanded. 
to say, here is the foundation of faith that you have been given. And from that foundation can be built a life of faith which must then continue to grow throughout your life. And so at different stages, I have become aware of the Lord pushing me, again calling me like that rich young man to say, lay aside for a moment what you thought before so that you can embrace a deeper and richer understanding and come to a greater awareness of the kingdom of God. This, this is the life that the Lord calls his disciples to. And all of us who take the time to come to this place to rekindle those memories, to celebrate the heritage of faith that we have, we are still called and challenged. Each one of us now at this Mass should picture Jesus standing in front of us and saying, here's the next thing I want. Because when we are able to let go of what we cling to so dearly and receive anew what the Lord offers to us, then we discover a greater richness. This is the work of a lifetime. And it is that work of a lifetime that gives us Saint Meinrad as a man that we should try to imitate. He is known as the martyr of charity because when he received those who came to take his life, he was unconcerned about what their intentions were and only sought to reflect the hospitality of Christ to them. Now, if we were to step back and evaluate what happened, if we were to say St. Meinrad probably shouldn't have let those men get so near to him, we would be thinking very rational thoughts. But rational thoughts will only get us so far in living the heroic reality of the gospel. It was rational thoughts that caused the apostles to say to Jesus after encountering the rich young man, well, then it must be impossible. How could we do what you have asked him to do? And Jesus doesn't explain it to them in a way so that it now makes sense. He calls them to what is irrational, to a recognition that the gospel has power to bring about the miraculous in us. And so St. Meinrad, he was shaped and molded by his continuous search for what the Lord asked of him, by his continuous laying aside of what stood in the way, so that when those two men came to him, he didn't assess the situation rationally, He trusted in the grace of God so that in giving his life, he experienced the greater richness of the gospel. He experienced the power of the same Jesus who was willing to lay down his life. And the impossible was accomplished in his life. In just a moment, as we move this celebration to the altar, the prayer over the gifts that is given to us for the Feast of St. Meinrad asks that through the grace of this celebration and the example of St. Meinrad, that we will be single-minded in our service. And so as we gather to recall our own heritage of faith and our connection to this place, that is the grace that we seek to be single-minded in God's service, to be willing where the rich young man failed to lay aside whatever we cling to, to give up all of the kind of thinking that moves us away from the gospel, and instead to embrace the call of Jesus no matter how impossible it seems so that trusting in the power of the gospel, trusting in the rich mercy of Jesus, the impossible may be accomplished in us. And so seeking the intercession of St. Meinrad, committing ourselves to single-minded service, we pray that whatever lies ahead for us, whatever direction the Lord leads us next, we will be willing to follow confident 
that as he has always worked miracles among his faithful, he may do so for us, that what would be impossible becomes possible because we so fully trust in the power of Jesus and his gospel. We now unite our voices in prayer, making known our needs today. That the great witness of Christ, Meinrad, fortify the people of God throughout the world and help bring them to unity in faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Saint Meinrad, advanced in monastic life and faith, continue to inspire the monks of this house and their mother, Abby, to prefer nothing to the love of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the prayer of our holy patron, Saint Meinrad, bring the blessing and favor of God to all who join themselves to the legacy of this place, most especially alumni, oblates and benefactors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the martyr of hospitality, Meinrad, bring consolation to all who are estranged and alienated from the church, family, and friends. Because of circumstances of life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That St. Meinrad, who bore patiently all suffering, sustain the elderly, and all the sick, and keep them in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the man of God, Meinrad, lead the souls of all the dead into the presence of God, especially the alumni who have died since our last reunion. Good and gracious God, we come to you in our need confident that you provide all our strength. Answer these and all the prayers of our hearts according to your will, because we make them through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the alumni deceased since reunion 2023. Class of 1953, Dr. John F. Brunner. Class of 1954, William Bill Bassler. James E. Grande. Class of 1955, Harold J. Carey. Charles Minnie. Robert O. Murphy, Monsinger Richard F. Zollinger. Class of 1956, the Most Reverend Joseph Hart, Father J. Norbert Howe. Class of 1957, Father Aurelius Boberic OSB, Donald E. Kiefer, Father Joseph B. Sheets. Class of 1958, Albert B. Lobner, Father James J. Ryman. Class of 1960, C. Richard Bowling, Ronald L. Flesh, Patrick W. Mullen, Paul E. Rosner. Deacon Joseph J. Shylert, Class of 1961, John Borchmeyer, Class of 1962, 
Edward J. Spahn, class of 1963, Ralph G. Betek, Paul Hedgedorn, Robert R. Kramer, Charles P. McGawkin, class of 1964, Charles H. Belch, Edward O. McCarthy, Monsignor Richard W. Moyer. Class of 1965, Robert G. Hayden, Gilbert D. Verkamp, Richard A. Wodinski. Class of 1966, Michael R. Burring, John K. Worsing. Class of 1967, Deacon C. Robert Marker, James G. Muller, Father Martin B. Nasser, Albert G. Nuzzi. Class of 1968, David E. Heathcott, Erwin P. Hoeing, Mitchell Theriak, William Ehrlich, James H. Williams. Class of 1969, Leo J. Foley, Dr. James B. Worth. Class of 1970, Father James Curtin, Michael J. Foster, Charles W. Johnson. Class of 1972, Father Hugh Fulmer, Daniel J. McCoy, Deacon Michael P. McGuire. Class of 1973, Father Michael J. Barras, Thomas G. Luck, Class of 1974, John J. Albert Jr., Gregory J. Dolan, Staniel J. Janik, George C. Shup Jr., Class of 1976, Father Raymond Mafaro, Stephen P. Sauerland. Class of 1977, Christopher Kessler. Class of 1978, Father Isaac S. McDaniel. Father Stephen E. Nass. Class of 1979, Father Samuel Russell OSB. Class of 1980, Kevin J. Carl. Class of 1981, Patrick J. Herla, Father Frank Torres. Class of 1982, Jerry H. Swanson. Class of 1983, Stephen D. Tinkle. Andrew Wimmer. College class of 1971. Daniel, Donald F. Deneu. Edward H. Stryer. College class of 1973. Melvin J. Knapp. College class of 1981. Darby J. Shaw. College class of 1982. William M. Rusty Clima. James A. Dews. College class of 1983. Patrick J. Doherty. College class of 1985. Father Daniel F. Gowan. College class of 1989. Kurt E. Ewan. St. Placid Hall, class of 1955, Charles P. Stemper. St. Placid Hall, class of 1957, Anthony S. Ryan. 
St. Placid Hall, class of 1958, Clement J. Sauer. Sabbatical program, class of 1994, Wim Shearder. Sabbatical program, class of 2007, Father Lucas Amandua. Summer session, class of 1979, Sister Joan Desmond, SND. Theology class of 1984, Father Clyde A. Bonner. Theology class of 1985, Father Dennis Razzielli. Father Anthony A. Wojcinski. Theology class of 1986, Daniel P. Schmitz. Permanent deacon class of 2003, Deacon Michael J. Gouge, Permanent Deacon Class of 2005, Deacon James F. Flynn, Deacon Gerald A. Gange, Permanent Deacon Class of 2012, Deacon John R. Biglow, Deacon Class of 2016, Deacon James A. McBride, Deacon Lawrence E. Todd. Graduate Theology Program of 1998, Janice F. Dupe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, let the prayers of blessed Meinrad, your martyr, be joined to these gifts, and may they keep us single-minded in your service. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr Meinrad poured out like Christ to glorify your name shows forth your marvelous works, by which in, your, in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. By the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
body of Christ. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Lord, each year you gladden us with the feast of blessed Meinrad, your martyr. Through his intercession, grant that we may be given a place among the blessed, where he now shines with the splendor of your grace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth in peace. Thanks.